This week we'll continue trucking through our Beatitude study. Our verse is Matthew 5, 6, if you want to take a moment to, to find it. This is the fourth week of the study, so we're about, about, at the, about the halfway point. This study will take us up through, I think it stops the week before Palm Sunday, and then we'll have Palm Sunday, then, then Easter. But our verse is Matthew 5, 6, which reads, at least in the version I have up here, as follows. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. So some opening questions for us. Who in here likes to be hungry or thirsty? No hands, huh? I didn't figure there would be. Oh, I just love it. Especially then who likes to be hangry, right? We've we've made up a word to Oh, what's that? We've made up a word to express how we feel when my eating schedule is off or I usually eat at eleven o'clock and now it's two o'clock and when someone says hangry you know what they, they mean though, right? Why is deciding what to eat or where to eat such a tough decision? I'm looking at the wife, right? Probably elbow one, right? Whether you're making out your grocery list for the week, deciding where to go to dinner, maybe after church, it can be a struggle for many people, right? I don't know what I want to eat. Have you ever been driving, perhaps with your significant other, and you ask them where they want to go, what do they tell you? I don't know. Yeah, I don't care. You pick. I've, yeah, I've heard all those things out there. We want you to decide. We don't care where we go. All right. Of course, then on the flip side of that, have you ever had a hankering for something? I just really want whatever it is right now. Like yesterday, I really wanted fish. So we went and got fish. And yeah, maybe you really want to go to a certain restaurant, or perhaps you wanted to. I, I'll just go to Grandma's house because no, Grandma can make everything. Or you, or you show up to church on, on potluck day, and you go, I hope so and so made their famous whatever it is. And you're all probably thinking, Oh, yeah, I go to the potluck and I hope there's such and such there. And if there is, it's like, Yay! And if not, well, it's still good, but. You know, you still wish there would have been more deviled eggs, right? There's never enough deviled eggs, is there? Never enough. Of course, the, the thirst side of things is a little easier to handle, right? If you're really thirsty, what should we get? Water, right? Yeah. It's the Mountain Dew, really. We shouldn't go for that. Of course, you know, other meals or snacks might have associated beverages, right? Breakfast and dessert, you might want to drink milk or coffee. Well, I like drinking milk or coffee if I have a dessert or, you know, breakfast type foods. If you're sick, right, you go, oh, yes, I need orange juice or a clear pop. Got to, got to have that 7-Up. I don't feel good. Need 7-Up. At least that's what always grandma would give us. Here, you don't feel good. Drink this. Of course, we all have our preferred beverages. Of course, of course, you know, talking about food, talking about drink deals with the physical side of things. And if we must deal with hunger for too long, we said that before, we do get hangry. Some people get hangry anyway. Some we just go, eh, I'm not hungry anymore. Ever, everybody ever been that? It's, I just wait. Not often, right? Okay. But beyond just physical hunger, the words here have a deeper meaning. It's like, Jesus will talk about physical things, but there's a spiritual side of things. There's always a spiritual side. They can, the words can mean to desire earnestly, to long for. So these are, it's, it's an earnest desire. I really want, it's a deep, deep desire. The words go just beyond normal hunger and thirst. Beyond being time for our next meal or our schedule being 
off a little bit. The same word here is used in Matthew 4, verse 1, when Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days, for 40 nights. He was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, and he became very hungry. He fasted. Same word. Could you imagine going 40 days and 40 nights with no food? So I was like, I don't want to go four hours. You know, 40 days. He was hungry. Same word. We can look at these words as being famished or parched, where someone in either of those conditions really needs food, they really need water. If they don't get it, they're going to perish. This is how deep these words are. It would be their soul focus, right? If you were that hungry, if you were that thirsty, think if you, if you were, you know, wandering through the desert, I've got to get water. That's your soul focus. How can I survive? Where can I get water? This is what that word means. When Jesus was in the wilderness those 40 days and nights, he was tempted to turn rocks into bread. His physical condition led to spiritual temptation, or at least the devil was like, well, he said, well, you're, now's my time to strike. His physical condition, maybe I can get him to sin. Of course, Jesus, who created everything and who later fed 5,000 people, we know he can make food just appear. He's God. Made manna up here in the desert all those years. He could turn rocks into food, but he did not give in the temptation. He simply refused the devil and used Scripture properly to do that. We should take Jesus' example seriously. We shouldn't allow our physical condition to open doors for temptation. Nor should we allow the devil to use perfectly good and normal physical desires to turn into something sinful. Take care of your body, take care of your mind, and that will help take care of your spirit. We may have a favorite food or a favorite meal that we desire But those here in this passage are hungering and thirsting for something else. They're thirsting for, and this, like, I love love digging into the language. So bear with me. This has quite a few different things here. So these people are hungering and thirsting after righteousness, justice, generosity. Integrity, virtue, piety, godliness, seeking a proper relationship with God, and doing what agrees with God's standards. And the last thing is fair and equitable dealing. It's why the right things, good things, honorable things, these are what the people or searching after, striving after, seeking, longing for. For the verse says that you will be blessed if you are hungering and thirsting after Him. Pretty much, where does all the good things come from? All the positive qualities stem from God Himself. If you're desiring to do what He says, if you're striving to follow His commandments, if you have a passion for forgiving and serving and being a person of honor, our verse says you will be. Blessed. Because we're seeking after God, we can be blessed in this life, but most definitely we'll be blessed in the next. If you're real quick, quickly, quickly turn to 1 John chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. These two verses line up well with, with this passage. 1 John chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, read as follows. Dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil who has been sinning since the beginning, but the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. So those who are seeking, longing, hungering, thirsting for the right things shows that they are righteous. 
If you have no desire to be in a right relationship with God or to live to his standards, at the very least, that should be a warning. Do I, do I desire what God wants? No, it's a time that it's personal inventory, right? And at the very worst, it shows that, you know, our conscience is being seared and that, you know, we're, we're far removed from where we should be. What's my desire? On Sunday and Wednesday evenings, we're having a study over Christian character. In our last meeting, we looked at the passages that warned us against doing and thinking impure things. Don't do impure things. Don't think impure thoughts. One, you know, sadly could lead to the other. And they're equitable in, in the Lord's sight. If I'm thinking the bad things, I'm just as guilty if I, if I did it. And the next time we meet, we'll be looking at how we can live pure lives. It's, it's one thing. Don't do the bad, right? Do the good. One of our questions in our last meeting was this. How does God describe those who practice impurity? It's like, church, Bible drill, right? Ephesians. We talked about Ephesians in Sunday school. We can talk about Ephesians in our sermon. But this time we'll be in Ephesians chapter 4. So take a second, find Ephesians chapter 4. Can you beat the preacher there, right? Found it. Did I win? Maybe. It's like, no, I got my fancy device. That's not a fair device to use in sword drills. But Ephesians chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. I'm on the wrong page here. I went back too far. It says this, because those who are living in, in sin, living in impurities, this is what it says, their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they've closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. That's the flip side of the people that are seeking and striving for God's righteousness are the people seeking sinful pleasure. Of course, in another passage we covered was in 1 John chapter 2, which is the passage that, that just says, you know, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. These are what, you know, what immoral, worldly, sinful people seek after, just to contrast what those who are seeking after God are after. That's a, it's a big difference, isn't it? I'm seeking after what my flesh wants, what the world wants, or am I seeking after what God wants? And it's a stark difference between those who are associated with the world and who, those who are associated with Jesus Christ. What you long for, what you desire, what you covet, what you want to obtain, what your priorities are, those things say a lot, if not everything, about you. Who is my life built around? Who is my life built on? Is Jesus Christ at the center? Good. And if not, well, that in lies this year, right? If Jesus isn't in the middle, someone or something else is. Of course, the last part of our verse of Matthew 5, 6 is that those people will be satisfied. That is nice, right? Whatever you search for, whatever you seek, it's nice when you find it. You ever lost something at home? Usually because someone else moved it, right? Again, right? Eyes are looking around, people are elbowing. I would never lose the remote if someone wouldn't move it from where I left it. Why are my shoes over here? That's where they go. It's not where I left them. Right? We hear the laughters. We, we know it's true. Yes, don't leave your stuff where it doesn't belong. But I know where it was. It's like, the office is getting better, but where's such and such? I'll go get it. Where was it? I, just, I know where it was because I put it somewhere. But, no, we joke, we laugh, but there is a... There's a sense of relief when we find something that we're, we're looking for. 
So it says, they will be satisfied. If this word was used in referring to an animal, it would mean that this animal would be fed or full of grass. Or an animal would be fattened. An animal would be satiated. Or an animal would gorge themselves. You know, see, see, you've seen animals, they'll, they'll eat, and eat, and eat, and eat till they're sick, right? And then they'll eat, and eat, and eat some more, right? They're gorging themselves. That's what it shows up. These people will have a ton of whatever they're looking for. They'll, they'll get it. Or speaking of people, it's, it means to satisfy with food, to eat one's fill, to be filled to satisfaction, or just to have your desires satisfied. So whatever we're searching for, in this case, it's God's righteousness. If we're seeking after it. If that's what we're longing for, if that's our sole desire, we're going to get it. When Jesus fed the multitude, this word shows up. It says, no, they all ate and they were satisfied and they had, you know, basketfuls left over. In the story of the prodigal son, this word shows up when it says, you know, he longed to fill himself with the pods the pigs were eating. He wanted to be satisfied with scraps, leftovers, garbage. I mean, he left home where everything was provided for him. Everything was nice and cozy. He gets the big head. I know what's better for me. And he's wanting to eat garbage. The same word used in different places by or for people in two different situations. And one, people were satisfied with Jesus and for what he did. He taught the multitude. He provided a meal. And then the other person tried to satisfy themselves with pig food, scraps. That's a major warning there for us too, but we must heed it, right? We must obey. Outside of Jesus, there is never truly any satisfaction. Sin promises that. Sin advertises that. It comes wrapped in a nice package, everything you think you want. Those of us who have lived... Life and now we're we're saved and yeah that life was awful and I'm glad the, the Lord saved me from it. We know far too well that sin will take you farther than you want to go. It'll cost you more than you ever dreamed of paying. And living a life of sin, a person must keep sinning or go deeper into sin to obtain to obtain the same pleasure they sought at once. It's not just I'll just do it one time. It's I'm doing it again and again and again. We know that sin can take you to places you don't want to go. Sin has negative consequences on our minds, our bodies, our relationships, and our spirits. Nothing good comes from sinning. Within Scripture, sexual sin is the big you mentioned. It plagues our society. It destroys lives, marriages, families. Even one time can cause harm. Greed and coveting are also mentioned frequently in Scripture, too. Paul wrote to Timothy that the love of money is the root of what? All evil. The love of money. Those who cheat and steal and use unethical means to obtain their wealth, what would they do to keep it? I think it would be the same, right? If you are a believer in... And follower of Jesus, then you know that true satisfaction only comes from having a healthy spiritual life. Again, one that is built and centered on Him. You are only satisfied if you are pursuing a life of holiness. If you're pursuing being sanctified, yes. Salvation happens in a moment, in an instant. We have a lifetime of of growing in the faith, of growing in grace, of being pruned and being more and more Christ-like each day. You know you're satisfied, but if your passion is Jesus, if your passion is sharing the gospel, if your passion is growing all the more closer to Him, while sin damages, destroys, and separates in both this life and the next life, we don't beat around the bush, A lifetime of unrepentant sin will only lead you one place. And that's hell. 
Outer darkness, right? Weak being a gnashing of teeth. We know how the Bible describes it. Unquenching flames. I don't want to go there. I don't want you to go there. And I hope we don't want anybody we know to go there. Which is all the more important. We share our testimony. We share the gospel. So other people have the same opportunity we were provided. And following Jesus and striving after him, we know that we can be satisfied in this life and also in the next. Jesus restores. Jesus reconciles. That's why I came, right? To restore and reconcile our relationship with the Father. We can't get to God on our own. But praise Him. He paved the way with Jesus Christ. His plan from the beginning. Genesis chapter 3, right after the fall happens. That's where we see the gospel show up. So. Psalm 42, 1 and two. That'll be the last place to turn. It'll sound real familiar once you get there. Again, can you beat the preacher, right? Psalm 42. Psalm 42, verses 1, and at least the first part of verse 2. As the deer... Hmm... Sounds familiar, right? As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for you, the living God. So in closing, who are you longing for? What are you striving for? And what will satisfy you? We know the answer ultimately, only Jesus can satisfy, and hopefully he is who you're searching for, striving for, and longing for.